It's the holiday season for eating one million cookies. And I'm definitely on my way to doing that. Hello friends. Welcome back to Monday Mix Plate. My name's Marie. Thank you for joining me. I saw something this week that made me really excited. And that was the trailer for the new Disney remake of Mulan. Now Mulan was my princess until Moana came along. To be honest, I haven't been very pleased with Disney's remakes in, of the cartoons into live action movies like um, Lion King, Aladdin. And it pains me to say that because I love me some Will Smith. But they just, they don't have, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what it is, but I just have not loved the remakes. However, the trailer for Mulan looks amazing. Have you now seen Peloton in the news over their most recent commercial? There was outcry amongst the land for their commercial. Peloton is an exercise bike. It's extremely pricey. It's kind of like a boutique sort of fitness thing. Anyway, the commercial is the man buys the bike for the woman for Christmas and you know, Twitter and social media kind of really erupted over the sort of stereotypical presentation of that. On top of the fact that the woman is already extremely thin, like they didn't even go for somebody in like the normal bracket, they went for someone really thin. And then on top of that, she just seems very insecure in the whole entire commercial. However, <laughs> if my husband bought me a Peloton, I would exalt him among men. Okay, so I said that I did not do a lot of shopping on Black Friday. However, I made up for it a little bit on Cyber Monday by shopping with Dino Apparel. They were doing 25% off their website and so I picked up some of their Lush Throws. I got, I had previously purchased, but they haven't arrived yet, two Lush Throws for my kids. And then I got one for both of my mother-in-laws and I got one for myself. Which I may end up giving to my mom just because it's beautiful and lush and cozy. Anyway, I was hoping to show them to you guys but they're not here yet. So that is definitely where I did some Cyber Monday damage and I'm really excited about that. If you've never tried anything by Dino Apparel, you have got to. Okay, so my I didn't have any flops this week, believe it or not, but my favorite was the fact that I thought I was out of my favorite Dr. Ginger uh, floss, but I was not. I found an extra package. If you've never tried this floss, it's excellent. It has coconut oil, xylitol, white charcoal floss. It has a nice waxy finish on it, but it's actually very easy to move in and out of teeth, and um, it's just lovely. I think I'm actually going to be trying their toothpaste and mouthwash because I've now been through, I think, three packages of this floss, and I just really love it. The only thing is I wish it didn't come in this container, this plastic container. So I wanted to combine destination formulation and aesthetics this week so we could talk a little bit more about the Honua Mahealani Moonlit Glow Balm. I mentioned it last week, I talked about giving it its own video, but to be honest, before the end of the year, I'm just not gonna have time to give it its own video. So I feel like understanding the formula is really key to understanding how to use this product in some ways. It's got a bunch of butters in here, like any balm probably would. A lippy butter, shea butter, cocoa butter, but then it has a couple other ingredients that really contribute to the texture um, that I wanna mention. Now, if you look on Honua's description of this product, they mention that it's not really going to completely absorb. You know, they have an oil, they have a water-based serum, all of those things are designed to absorb really nicely. This one is designed to really sit on the skin, be occlusive and emollient, and really um, help keep moisture in, is, is really how I think of this product. It's very occlusive, but I find it to be breathable. Um, so let's just mention some of the other things that contribute to the texture and the occlusive nature of the product. So it has jojoba esters in it, which can be kind of waxy and they contribute to the texture of the product. There's soy sterols in here, which also kind of have a waxy feel, also contribute to the texture. She has sunflower wax 
and another ingredient that's similar to like a beeswax derivative called cerebellina. So what I want to mention is that easily explains a lot of things about the texture of this product. First of all, when you get it out on your finger, it does not have a quick skin melt. Let's contrast that to the May Lindstrom Blue Cocoon. The May Lindstrom Blue Cocoon has absolutely no waxes in it. It's just butters and oils. And if you look at it, we just barely touched that on my fingers. That's the Blue Cocoon. It melted immediately. Now, take the Mahe Alani Balm, and you've really got to work it to warm it. And even when you're warming it, it does not have a great spreadability to it. Depending on how you want to use the product, this can be a really good thing. Um, one of the things I noticed is that the combination of those other ingredients besides just butters and plant oils, the soy sterols, the jojoba esters, they contribute to the product being occlusive without being excessively greasy. When you rub the May Lindstrom Blue Cocoon in, it definitely feels like an oil almost on your skin and can feel semi-greasy. However, when you're playing with the Mahi Alani, it really goes to almost a semi-matte texture really quickly in my opinion. And the way I've been using it, since I've kind of investigated the formula more, since I've really kind of thought through why isn't the product spreading, why is it um, so dense, is that I take a very, very light amount. I really, really warm it in my fingers and then I move it around. Now the nice thing about using a product like this during the winter time is that because it's so occlusive, because it's not really absorbing overnight, it's really going to help to keep moisture in. Now if you're sleeping with your heat on or like sometimes like we are with our air conditioning on, that's really dry air. And the skin actually wants to match your skin moisture level with the outside air. So skin is going to feel drier in winter time. And a product like this is really going to be occlusive and help stop some of that trans epidermal water loss and keep moisture in. One of the key points I want to make about it though is that if you're using this product night after night or frequently, um, a little goes a long way. You really want to warm it in your hands. Really, really warm it so that you can get to move around. Um, and then I highly recommend in the morning using something to remove it. That's a lot of really dense ingredients to keep on your skin all day. And if you're layering product after product on top of it in the morning without washing your face, you may notice buildup or some clogged pores just because of the whack, you know, the multiple ingredients that contribute to that very occlusive emollient texture. Really quickly, I wanted to swatch it next to the Josh Rosebrook. Now the Josh Rosebrook product has separated for me. They, he calls it a Vital Balm Cream, and it is a cream in the sense that it has aloe vera juice in it. However, it doesn't have a traditional waxy-like emulsifier in it. So I would almost say that this product is, you know, it's interesting to compare these two products. And I'm comparing all three of these because they're kind of like blue tansy pro products. But when you compare the two of these, this one has quite a bit of gums in it to kind of help it create that fluffy texture. And I would say at times the Josh Rosebrook is a little bit unbreathable compared to the Mahi Alani. That's one thing I found really interesting about this product that despite it being very dense, um, despite it being like definitely a layer or a coating on the skin, it's actually very breathable. So just some thoughts of mine on this product. I mean, we're really still getting to know each other. I've only had it for two and a half weeks. And um, yeah. All right, now really quickly, let's do a science corner. I'm going to be delving into this topic in depth in the new year, and I'm really excited about the video I'm working on for that. However, really quickly, I wanted to mention this article from Cosmetics and Toiletries, and it's about how the term anti-aging is out. And what? Lo and behold, conventional beauty is now starting to adopt the clean or holistic terms, well aging, better aging, shocker, because green beauty's rising, conventional beauty has no choice but to pay attention. 
So it's interesting because they mention how in Spain, there's a lot of research going on with elderly people about the idea um, of better aging. And that kind of piqued my interest because if you're familiar, the brand Ayuna is from Spain and their idea of better or well aging, less is beauty, um, all those kind of ideas are coming out of Spain where they are based. Now what really got me in this article was when they shift gears because they don't want to use anti-aging, because they don't want to critique the aging process, they're looking into ways that they can explore or you know, market to consumers. And they talk about hedonism and what they call the unconscious purchase criteria. Now, that leads us to talking about what many cosmetic chemists mention is that is the consumer experience. Now, when I really started to delve into researching um, cosmetic formulas and, and co formulation sites and chemist boards, it became clear to me that a lot of what brands are selling is just chatter. And a huge part of the success of a product is the consumer perceived experience. This is talked about over and over by chemists. So, what the article mentions is that this consumer perceived experience can at times be totally unconscious, but that these small rituals that people do lead to a sense of well being and happiness and a perception that the product is performing the way it's supposed to. Are you, are you drawing conclusions here? Because I hope you are. But this perfectly, perfectly illustrates why green beauty continues to soar, why it's increasingly taking over the market, why conventional beauty can, cannot ignore it anymore. Tell everyone on the green beauty hating train that this is the reason. Green beauty takes the cake at the consumer perceived experience. The smells, the textures, the packaging, the marketing, the um, stories behind the makers, um, they're all designed to induce this happiness, self-love, daily rituals, connection to nature. And brands, conventional beauty, conventional bloggers would do well to recognize this. Is people want to feel good about the products that they're using. They want them to make them feel better. Um, just, just a couple of brands that have built their entire empire on this. Leilani Skincare. Mahalo Skincare, Osmia Organics, Live Botanical, Laurel Whole Plant Organics, Beneath Your Mask. All these green beauty brands that are rising, that are doing really well um, because they're offering the consumer perceived experience. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I want to talk more about this in the new year because I have a whole video kind of related to my ideas about why green beauty, despite all the haters, continues to just soar. Anyway, that's it for this week. This video is long. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next, I'll see you on Friday. I got a collab up with a friend of mine and I'll see you on Friday. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.